Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different Kickstarter tabletop game project every weekday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time get my honest thoughts on how that project is being ran. And today I'm very excited to check out the fifth most popular project in all the games right now. That is the DC deck building game, 10th anniversary and i do gotta say i'm pre-inclined to like this i love the dc deck building game it's one of my favorite deck building systems i have like five or six of the games i got the lord of the rings game i got the hobbit game um so i'm a big fan of the system so this one is going to be the 10th anniversary of dc deck building game with injustice and the dot 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 let's go darth so we got the deck building game injustice not sure what that is so uh, oh this is an expansion featuring injustice which is massively popular i know there's a video game spin-off of it as well which is very popular i think it actually has a couple sequels it's a fighting game i've seen my buddy play it before it looks really impressive and then we have uh the dc deck building game dc rivals the flash versus the reverse flash so not ex so it looks like it's two expansion packs for it okay but we're making a big deal because we got that 10th anniversary logo which tells me there's probably going to be a big whale Pledge level here, where I can just get caught up and spend like $500 on all the DC deck building stuff. Or maybe not. I'm, I'm actually kind of inter interested to see how they run this Kickstarter. But it's already raised $364,000. Main image, I'd say it looks good. I see The Flash, I see Superman, I see Injustice, I see 10th Anniversary. I'd like to know some prices maybe, player counts. But other than that, like this is looking solid. Let's get into the video. In 2012... Cryptozoic released the original DC deck building game, bringing DC's greatest superheroes and super villains to the world of deck building games. I really like that. So many times companies just kind of assume that we know about your original game and why we should be excited that this is the reprint or the second edition or the whatever. So I, just 12 seconds, they just, boop, to that, 10 years ago, this came out. In the years after, we've released tons more games and expansions, and the community of incredible fans has grown and grown. Now, on its... Yeah, for the longest time, one of the biggest arguments was the DCD deck building game versus uh, Marvel, the, uh, the Marvel deck building game. That's not the name of it, but um, I personally like this system better than that system, but there's lots of people that argue to the contrary. Either way, it's a great time to be in gaming that we can have that argument. It's 10th anniversary. The DC deck building game series is taking things to the next level. It's time for Injustice. Based on the hit video game and comic series, join Batman and other DC characters as they battle against a villainous Superman. It's gonna be a brawl as you and your opponents take turns landing devastating blows. Knockout. Rivals! The Flash versus Reverse Flash brings you high-speed two-player action. Which of the iconic rivals will come out on top? It's up to you! So this is... This seems to be an entirely different game. This is like the part of the infomercial where they're like, We know you're buying this hairbrush, but we're also throwing in the deep fryer. Like, it's like, oh, cool. Like, this is feels... So essentially, this is like a, a DC deck builder duel, maybe? Like a two-player head-to-head thing? Welcome to the multiverse. Now, where's this game? So this is the DC. This is the multiverse box. This is the so these are multiverse boxes. I actually okay. These two new editions of the multiverse box are bigger and better, and they provide the perfect home for your entire DC deck building game collection. Okay. That's not all. There are exclusive playmats and multiverse editions of six DC deck building game base games that you could pledge for. Wait, wait, wait. So. All the old stuff, if you want the old stuff. I think that's what they're saying here, which is great. I just compliment another thing. Like, why not offer your back inventory? People are going to buy it right now, sell it to them right now. Pledge for and get ready for some explosive stretch goals. Oh, celebrate 10. We just got teased with stretch goals and it looked like an expansion. Now, is that going to be an expansion? Is this going to be one of those add-on expansions where I have to pay the extra money? Or is this going to be a thing where it's thrown in because the price is so big because you're giving me the multiverse whale or whatever? Because I, I think the multiverse is you get all, all the components. Hopefully, there's a nice, clean, clear pledge level area. An amazing years of the DC deck building game. Pledge now on Kickstarter. Okay. Solid video. I want some more information, but honestly, I'm excited to get to the pledge level area. So I think it's a really well done video there. It, it caught me up on what it is. Uh, okay. 11 created, 31 back. Since 2010, CryptoZone Entertainment is dedicated to the concept of fans first, striving to develop the most creative and sought-after products for pop culture enthusiasts worldwide. They do a lot of intellectual property things, and most of the time they do them pretty well. Um, 
I, I think I like more Cryptozoic games than I don't. Now, I will say, a lot of people, I think they, they have games that are tend to be towards the lighter side, lightish medium. Um, but, but I think they've branched out since then. But I still think that's like their, I don't know. Visit Cryptozoics for more information about product releases, events, and news. They also do Spyfall, which is amazing. You should go play it if you have not. So we got two people here, hopefully on the customer service, because the backer kit, very creative name, we're not going to be doing that. Let's check out the previous projects, see how many we have outstanding. Steven Rhodes Games, I know they did that, Volume 2. So that one is not definitely out yet. I think that one was very recent. Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards and Nihilab again, something, whatever, something, or others. I'm pretty sure this is out, and I'm pretty sure that is out, because I've seen pictures on my Kickstarters. Whoops, wrong thing. <laughs> All right, we got updates. Make sure this is out. Video on how to pack opponents in this box, plus French and Spanish language updates. Uh, fulfillment update and Kickstarter for Steve Jackson. Munchkin presents Batman. Interesting. Oh, this is in March. As we said last time, English language copies are still set for fulfillment at various warehouses around the world. And so, yeah, people have gotten their stuff. And I think I've seen pictures of this, actually. How does one count for missing? Yeah, so people got their stuff. Awesome. And that was a big project. So then we got Epic Spell Wars. Is this one out yet? Let's double check these. ASAP. So these things are going to be coming out relatively soon if they're getting the mailers. Production delay. Good news and some bad news. So here we go. And it looks like good customer service, by the way, which is honestly why we check these things for. I, I don't personally care if they have projects out, but that's a personal thing, but some people do. Some people are like, they hold it against them, like, no, I don't, I want you to go from one project to the next project. And hey, everybody shops different on Kickstarter, which is why I love Kickstarter. Uh, so, fa uh, uh, fantastic, I've not received mine, I've not received my fan letter, and as a shirt, I signed up. Oh, so this is for the fan letter. And good news and bad news. Sadly, we ran into a production issue. It will be delayed the shipment of an isle again for all the rewards. We have approved digital. So they don't actually tell you when they were delayed. Okay. So they have two things, it looks like. Oh, no. Three things out. Okay. Once again, Cryptozoic is a, a pretty well-known company in the board game circuit if, if you're newer to the hobby. So I would not be too concerned about the Can You Do It. Can You Do It? Just, it's, yes. You know, uh, because they would not continue to get IPs if they were not crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Because they're working with somebody else's baby here. You don't think you don't think DC wants this to turn into a shit show? No. Um, DC deck building game. Made the stuff. Here's the things. Where's the pledge levels? Gods Amongst Us. Still don't know the player link, the time count, or the age. That's that's a bit of a bugaboo. I'd like to know that. And I think that should always be mentioned honestly from the jump. So I look at this and I say, come on. What's the player link? What's the time count? One to five players? One to six players? One to four players? What is it? Uh, this is the Gods Amongst Us box. So this is so this is all we've done. Oh, this is what you're buying. You got this box. You can get the multiverse box. You get a different multiverse box. And you can get this, which is its own separate standalone game. Kickstarter exclusive game, no less, it looks like down there. Interesting. Maybe. I mean, don't quote me on that. Or do. I don't care. Uh, where, so where's the box? Makes you part of the high-speed battle between the iconic rivals. Each player has three unique character cards, each with more formidable... Yes, yeah, so this is its own separate game. Um, okay, need more information on that. DC Deck Building Multiverse Box. So now you're going to tell me a little bit more about this. The new and improved DC Deck Building Multiverse Box is available as both a Super Villains Edition featuring... So they're two different boxes. These storage boxes for your collection are designed to fit. So this is if you want to buy the big box. Cool. I don't have a problem with that being a pledge level be very interested to see how these pledge levels break down here or how they even handle their pledge area because they're 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 selling very different products here oh we got a big box for the game we got a new expansion and then we have a whole entirely new game so they're selling a lot of different things plus they're selling all their back catalog as well this is just like cleaning house on the dc deck building game which is great do it why not uh, i do think it's kind of odd that there's not the big whale pledge level the one for the people who are so new to the hobby, or maybe maybe they're not so new to the hobby, maybe they just never played it. Never played the DC deck building game, ever. You might have fallen in love with it, want to spend 700, 800, whatever the hell that crazy number is to buy everything. If you have everything, if that is something that they could do, I feel like that should most definitely be a pledge level. You know? I don't know. I, 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 I yeah, I don't know. That's so weird. Now, maybe some of them are out of print and some of them are in print, and maybe that's why. I don't know. Because then you have to worry about making a print run of something. How to play stuff, so we're going to the weeds. Surprised there's not a video. I'm sure there's probably a how to play video of the DC deck building game. Because it was very hot stuff for uh, quite a while. The Flash versus Reverse Flash. So this is its own separate game. It says Kickstarter exclusive. Are you going to tell me about that? Players take on the roles of the Flash and Reverse Flash using the rival modes of DC deck building games. So they're taking the system. You skipped over the play count and play time. I didn't see it. 
Did I? How to play? Oh, oh, it's, it's right there at the bottom. Two to four. So, right, it's kind of small. Okay. Two to four, 69 to me. Now I know. This one, does this one have it? There it is. Two players, 45 minutes. Okay. Cool. So, this is its own separate game as well. Hopefully, there's a gameplay video. It's great you're going to the weeds here a little bit on how the game works. Combine seamlessly with other games. Oh, okay. So, this is a system they have. Take backsies. I just wasn't aware of this system. Okay. Cool. And I imagine you could probably, I wonder if you could play different characters against different people. So now it actually kind of gets me excited about that system as well. They are really selling. They are just opening up a liquidation sale right here. And I kind of love it. Why not? About the multiverse boxes. Kickstarter exclusive cover. Uh, okay. Great. Cool stuff. Things. The foam inserts. Look at that. Doing a great job of spotlighting that too. I'm glad they opened that box. I think this is a fantastic shot right here. Too many companies don't open the box. If you know what the inside of the box looks like, show me the inside of the box. I want to see the inside of the box. Holds 540 sleeve cards and five dividers. Great. This is super awesome information. Like, if I'm really interested in this box and I'm reading all this information, I feel like they're giving me a lot of information here. I love what they're doing here. Uh, events. Prices, though. I would like the, the prices. You're beating around the bush here on the prices and the pledge system. And how's this going to work? Because there's you're offering a lot of things. I wonder if they're just going to have one pledge level and it's like you'd put it in there or something. Here's for the rules for the multiverse crossover packs. This is another thing. Uh, check out the other releases so you can get these. Fans first. What makes DC deck building so special is the community that has grown around it who love the DC characters and gameplay and spending time together. We asked many of these fans to spend in photos of their collection, which we're happy to share. Ah, oh, oh, there it is. Hobbit snuck it in. I was going to say. Lord of the Rings is on there. That's a fun one, too. So, oh, they got the big review. Big dog review. Why not pull a quote from it? Discriminating Gamer, love it. He's one of my favorite reviewers. Uh, if you've never checked out the Discriminating Gamer, uh, I think he does a fantastic job. The DC deck building game, Dark Knights, uh, also likewise. And he's like, um, he's like, it was a voice actor, uh, and then he started to cover board game stuff. And it's just he has like a million subscribers, something crazy like that. And it's so cool when when they start bringing people into the hobby, you know, talking about the DC deck building game. And that's just mm, love it. Social media, like, like that's great. DC Deck Building Day, Dark Tonight, Roll for Credit. Okay, so I'd love to see some quotes from those about why this game is so spectacular. All right, so the Pledge Tears, 70 bucks. So I'm getting, you're selling me two separate games for $70. It's so weird. Um, but either way, that's I feel like that's reasonably priced, I guess. It feels, it feels retail-y priced, and maybe that's just because I know what to expect in this box but then at the same time have you really showed me the components that i'm gonna have we gotten the component shot we got this shot okay this was the component shot okay cool so they kind of combined uh, the long sexy scrolling shot with the uh the gameplay the how to play here and this is where they're showing you a lot of the components that's interesting i kind of like that actually you know, because I just browse, because I'm I'm more looking at the project as a whole. Like I'm a teacher skimming right now, uh, but but like if I'm actually wanting to know about this game, I actually like that format a lot. You're showing me the components up close while also then kind of weaving together the gameplay. Like that's what I want in a rule booklet too. I think that's I think that's I actually really like that uh, about the multiverse boxes. Oh, so yeah, whoop, back there. I think that's a full half grade bump up right there. I always say half grade drop. I think I need to say bump up, but I really love stuff. And I like that. Half grade bump up. Welcome to the multiverse. Rivals. Injustice. Multiverse box. Multiverse box. Super villains play mat. And I think I'm going to do that more often because I had I had a Kickstarter product that I did last week where it was really scammy. It felt super scammy. And I ended up giving it like a B because they did everything else really well. Like their marketing was spectacular. And I was like, I need to, I need to fix this system. Uh, Super Villains Playmat exclusive to rewards tiers DCBG Supervan. So now we're getting into the weeds. You get the playmat, you get the box, you get both boxes. I don't know why you'd want both boxes. You probably you probably don't have. You probably don't have two complete sets of it. That seems like an odd one. Okay, I'm very curious to see how much how much that blood how popular that pledge level is. So seventy bucks just for the game. Four hundred ninety one people. Okay, not most people just for there. Uh, welcome to the multiverse. This is where we're getting the big, oh, the big box. Is there a, is there the ad, is there the $1 pledge where you can just get the ad? No, there's not. 
So they're kind of making you buy both these games together. Mm. But by labeling this as a Kickstarter exclusive. Let me know, Chad. Is that how you're reading this as well? That's kind of how it feels to me a little bit. Not a fan of that. So 491 bucks, and hopefully there's an add-on system that rectifies all this. It's the same thing with here. If you want to get the multiverse box, you have to buy these two games. And you have to buy the playmat, no less, too. So they're not only lumping in the multiverse box, which is maybe that's just what you want. Maybe you already have a playmat, but now you have to get the, the uh, exclusive the playmat? Yeah, I can't see it any other way. That's how it looks, and I don't like it. Like, I just want... The, I came here for just the box. Look at this. No, no, no. Yeah, that's my perspective. I came here for just the box because I'm a diehard fan, and I already have a lot of DC deck building content. I really like the system. Okay. I got... Okay, I get the box. Oh, there's two different kinds of box. Cool. Oh, but I have to buy the playmat? I don't want a playmat. Well, I already got a playmat. Oh, I I don't just have to buy the playmat? I have to buy this and this? Th that does... Like, there has to be... Like, there's got to be some other way where I can just buy this box, right? Right? On this Kickstarter... I'm hoping it comes. I'm really hoping because that's just, that's not a good look. DC DBG super fan. This is if you get the box. Uh, the Injustice playmat. This is disappointing. I don't like Injustice, but I'm interested in the Flash Rivals game. Well, if you want it, you got to buy the other one. Um, the DC DBG Infinite, which comes with a lot of other stuff. So if you want to get, wait, is this if you want to get these promo cards, you have to buy everything else? Is that, that can't, like, that's, I think that's, I think that's, I can't keep saying, I can't, I keep saying, I can't think that's the right way. Like, I, that can't be right. And you certainly got to get to a point where like, okay, that's, that's, that's it. That's what they're doing. And that's, that's, that's the realization I just had. Not a fan of that. Retailer one, cool. Cool-ish. You want to stock this? You're going to stock that. Retailer two. You want to stock this multiverse box because you know the DC deck builder is a hot seller at your store. You got to stock everything else. That's the whale pledge, which includes all those expansions. Oh, no, just it comes with the rule books. Oh, they're going to preload it into the box. I bet they're not going to send you all the boxes. And that's why they're just showing the cards and not showing the boxes. I don't have an issue with that at all. Um, but maybe that could be just a little bit, like, you could use that as a selling point, I think, almost. Especially when you get to the shipping. Because I imagine this is going to be a heavy one. So this is the pledge level that presumably is the big whale that I was asking for. $345. And you're getting one, two, three, four, five, six big boxes, all the rule booklets, seven, seven big box games, and then one of the two-player tasters, which they have other stuff which you'll inevitably want. If you like the game and you like the system, but you have to buy the playmat as well. Okay, you get a playmat, you get two playmats. Which you know that one I can't actually. You know what? I'm the playmats is talking me into it because I was like, why well, need two? But that's because each player is going to have their own playmat. Maybe no, they're not. Okay, whatever. I'm off. So three forty-five. Okay, let's check out the pledge level. So this is to get the game four hundred ninety-one. This is get woke. So this is get the box. 720 722 so that's the most popular pledge levels people want the box right now and then we have the super fan 460 and that one is the what does that one add that adds the injustice play mat interesting is that is that what i'm seeing there right multiverse box super hit. get it pledge a one dollar then add whatever individual project what there is an add an option on the end ah why would they put it, like, typically people put it right here. So that's interesting. Good. Thank you so much, Rez. Oh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to see that. I didn't want to believe that. Where, where is it? Oh, but I still haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Let me double check. Let me make sure I didn't miss it on the top because I was browsing. Skimming. Okay. Didn't see it. Stretch goals. Injustice. One promo of a size character. Move card. Okay, cool. One promo card. And this, once again, main image, maybe some information. Stretch goals unlocked. They could, there's some blackness on the bottom you could fill in. Five stretch goals unlocked. Just bam, right there. It'd be nice stuff. 
Or 12 cards unlocked, because you're unlocking cards here. You're unlocking lots of cards. How many cards have you unlocked? 3, 4, 7, 11, uh, 12. Th we're unlocking tons of cards. I would totally be mentioning that on the marquee. Get people excited for the 10th anniversary box. Convince them that I need to get... I need to drop this 320 bucks. KO effects in possible mode? Excellent. So you're in a whole new game mode? Wow. And that presumably is going to be a box that they can sell later on. And then this is... So now they're adding extra stuff into that game. Interesting. Interesting. The super fan has both multiverse boxes. Yeah. That's such a weird... Like, why? I was, why do people... Please, if, if maybe if someone in the chat is a diehard fan, why would you want two of the big boxes to hold your game? Like that, like what are you gonna do? The second box is just like, well, I just what the hell do I do with the second box? You know, add-ons. If you pre-order through the Kickstarter miniature uh, campaign, you'll have the opportunity to add multiple copies of Injustice Rival, both multiverse boxes, and six. Uh, you also so this is if you want to add on stuff. Please note the Super Villains playmat is exclusively available as part of some of the reward tiers. If you pre and that's man, that is if you pre-order through the Kickstarter campaign, you'll have the opportunity to add. So this is adding extra stuff. So there is no one dollar pledge level that I'm really seeing here. Like the one dollar, then add on anything else. Uh, if, I think if you have everything, you need you need more than one of the multiverse boxes. Wait, 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 wait. That there's no way that could be right. Because then what if the, about the people who only get one of the boxes? Because isn't that the thing that you get to choose your box? Because if I bought one of those boxes and it didn't fit all my stuff, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, what the hell? It's the multiverse box. I got to buy both multiverse boxes? Like that, I hope that's not right. Because that's, I can see people being annoyed at that. Uh, okay. Like imagine if you got a Dominion big box. You bought it home. And it's up to date. It's new. The company themselves did it. And you try to put all your Dominion stuff in there. It didn't all fit. You'd be like, what the hell is this? Now, in the future, expansions can throw it in a bugaboo. I get that. Comic book CCG players want all the art so they can either destroy the box to put the art on the wall or tuck it away in a cabinet and never see it again. So apparently, there is a whole separate sector of the board game hobby that I was not aware of that now I'm aware of. And I do actually, you know that I think about it? My buddy Ronnie. And I've seen some other people now do this. I think my buddy Brandon's done it uh, before. He puts expansion boxes on the wall. And that's something that I'd like to do as well. Okay. I hadn't really thought of that. I don't think of it as like something most thing people actively think about when they're backing a Kickstarter. But hey, whatever. In the comments slash FAQ, one new multiverse box will fit everything to date, including the new items in this Kickstarter. But a second box helps future-proof, I guess. Okay, so that is good to know. <laughs> if it didn't fit everything, that would be terrible. Uh, so we're getting play mats. It's as if you just only includes cards. Okay. And that's what that's what we ended up deducing. 25, 25, 15. You want the rule books? 15 bucks. Uh okay. Seems a bit high, but hey, whatever. I I don't I don't think most people are probably taking that. Uh shipping info and cause wait, the cards. You oh so you have to buy the cards. Do you get the cards and the rule booklet together? Are you making me pay an extra 15 bucks for the rule booklet? Is that is that I keep saying? Don't say. Is that what I see? Because that's that's the way this is. I think. How many people? So I think this. Ah, that's so weird. Again, people are collecting the art. Okay, that's that's one thing as well. That's a whole separate ballpark that throws a wrench into everything. Uh, so thank you for bringing that point up. We expect rewards to start shipping backers in December 2022. We're shipping to part with Quartermac Logistics. Love Quartermac. Uh, like mentioned that, when we import this product to the UK and EU, we will have to pay a VAT based on the value of the product. This percentage is based on the thing. The principal graphic shows estimated shipping costs, not including add-ons, but cost may ship. And look at this. This is nice, clean, clear. They got the different pledge levels. They got the cost. Beautiful pledge area. I like it. I like the blue, too. All right, so what am I getting if I get the the big one? Because the big one is the uh, $320 one. So it's like $379 to get everything in the game. I don't know, like 400 Okay. I mean, it's 10 years worth of content. And they've released tons of content on it. I say that's reasonable. You know, reasonable, but... I don't, I don't have a huge issue with it, but man, that price, making people buy both games. So 90 bucks to get both everything. 
So just did Justice for All and the other game that's 90 bucks. So you're looking at 60 and 30. So essentially you're paying retail for one game and then 30 bucks for the other game. And wow, I just said that out loud and now that kind of really killed me there a little bit. Yeah. Looking at it from that perspective because it's $70 for that pledge level. And let me double check that. That's kind of full MSRP, isn't it? Unless they're raising the price of MSRP to higher than $60. US one for twenty dollars, please. Uh yeah, that's um So yeah, that's ninety bucks. So essentially they're banking now on Wow. Forty dollars a year ago over a decade. Timeline. So here's the thing. Follow us on Twitter, backer kit, stuff. Wow, that just hit me like a ton of bricks. So essentially they're banking on the Kickstarter exclusives. You need to get the Kickstarter exclusives. And you're also getting other stuffs, right? Yeah, all tiers. Let's go back to this stretch goal here, because this is really the meat and potatoes here. Oversized card that goes into the game for everyone, I guess. Yes, and so this is an oversized character super move card. Not quite sure what that is, so I think it's just a larger version of a card that only you get with the Kickstarter exclusive. And this is an oversized character. $70 for the two games lines up with a retail price plus shipping or just wait to buy in stores without the Kickstarter exclusive shipping. The stretch goal area mentions a DC Bombshells expansion. Yeah, now that, if that is added on to the price, that's actually a huge deal. And I think that is really bad on their graphic design, like, updating. Because... I think when I get to that $70 one, I want to I go back to that $70, because this is actually, yeah, we're getting a whole other box here, right? Like, this is going to be seven Clash cards, eight Clash cards. So I think they're really underselling that that pledge level there, because let's I want to go back to it, the $70 ones. So this this does not look, like, this this price hit me like, eh, it wasn't great. And then I hit the $20, like, ah, eh, even not, more not great. But I think it could, I think it could be such an easier pill to swallow if they got the graphic designer to, boom, just bump down this spot and show all the other things that have been unlocked. So now it's not $70 for this, it's $70 for that and that and this. And then I, since I'm a fan of this universe, maybe, I can see that, oh, that means that's going to be an extra expansion box. So we're essentially going to be getting another expansion along with this. So their stretch goals, I think, are just misrepresented on this pledge tier thing. And I think that's to the detriment of them. Because my initial was like add eh, to the price and then add eh, to the shipping with the price and i think it could have been remedied by just stretch going me hard there yep bombshells is a new expansion looks like they were trying to keep it a secret for later but ended up premiering it quicker interesting very interesting let's check out the faq ah it hurts my eyes go check out reload from colossal games and a lot of other newer products i think i'm moving i think i'm shoving the industry standard by by keep mentioning it uh because i've seen it in other products but yes, uh, this because if my question is the 16th question, I have to read through 16 other questions to figure mine out. And I hate that. Like, that just makes the FAQ not fun and inviting. So just lump it up into big chunks, put the words in the front. Just when you see it, you know it, you love it. So 20 comments, 10 comments, 15 comments, 27. So we got some custom, we got some engagement here. Those are pretty solid numbers. Respect game. Introduce Injustice Impossible Mode. This game is celebrating the past of the DC deck of the game, but more importantly, we're looking forward to the future. The pandemic interrupted our plans for the series, resulting in no new releases in 2021. But this year, the DC deck of the game is back, and a big part of that is Injustice. We've been working in this latest big box game for over a year, and we're really proud of it. Many of the stretch goals in this campaign will continue to add new features and exclusives for the game. That leads us to our latest stretch goals, which unlocks a new way to play Injustice. The DC deck of the game veterans are already familiar with the impossible mode, supervillains included in Crisis expansions. These super so you're telling me that essentially, these are expansions that we've done in the past, and we decided we're going to start doing it with this new Injustice right now, so you're going to essentially be getting another expansion. And this is great information to have in the stretch goals. Or, excuse me, in the updates and letting people know about this, getting them excited. But here's the thing. The only reason that I was able to put two and two together and to realize that essentially they were giving me extra expansion boxes was because I was familiar with the system. And I understood that. And I don't think they're conveying that nearly well enough to the newer people who don't know the system. Who are like, oh, they're not... They think they're just getting cards, but it's like, no, you're getting extra boxes here. And I think that's just so undersold in that stretch goal in that pledge level area.
because yeah this these are banger stretch goals here that are adding chunks of gameplay you know and and i don't i feel like that's underrepresented in that 70 dollar price level there all right, uh, the second edition is the KO token effects. In the standard game, you'll see a KO token worth minus three. When the health is reduced, these reduced tokens you score, but don't impact your momentum. When playing in possible mode, uh, you'll also... So these are so you get to see these. You get to see first glance. Oh, this is another thing that's coming with that mini expansion that you're getting, which is going to make it so that once... If you want to bump up the difficulty because you love this game, you're going to be able to do that. And that, appear, that appeals to gamers. Look at the most popular game, Elden Ring, on the planet right now. It's insanely difficult. So this is the kind of thing where it's like insane difficulty mode. Like that that should be under that $70 pledge level. This whatever this box is going to look like insane difficulty mode. Kickstarter exclusive. You're not going to get this otherwise. Yeah. So interesting. Clash cards look sweet, super excited, very cool stuff. Uh so they're asking okay, they're in they're in here. Awesome doing the customer service, great churning this. Did they ask a question? Tell us what you think about this new impossible mode in the comments. Looky there. Looky, looky, who gets a cookie? What did I say before I went into these? These are pretty good comment numbers, and it's because they're directly saying, post in the comments. They're asking questions. They're getting people engaged. It's not hard to do. Awesome. Awesome possum. Love it. Great. So good. We have engaging updates. I think we should be conveying a little bit more of information into the main area, though. Uh, my request, hoping reconsiderations to some and big hopes for the others, think and level of possibilities are support for five to six player, even as an add on. Yeah, supports for five to six players would be massive because you just you attract a whole different clientele to it. I love using that word. Solo mode. Yeah, that one seems very surprising as well that over the 10 years there was not a solar mode. Cooperative crisis as stretch goal. That would be fantastic. Add ons for all promo cards, foil oversights cards. Yeah, I think most people would, would absolutely love that stuff. But granted, if they've never done a cooperative mode, in theory, that would mean that it's hard to do. I bet if you get a board game geek, someone's probably already done it. Because um, people do that for every game. <laughs> what do we got? Major bummer on the cut to four players. I just noticed that. Oh, so it ooh, so it was higher player count. Just kind of assumed they would keep the standard format. I would go for an option to add more set of starter cards for Injustice as an add-on. Wow. You know what sucks? Waiting like a year to play these games. LOL. Well, that one that okay we get we get that one. the rogue by far the best crosswork path teamwork ability okay interesting so they strip some stuff away i wonder if their plan is to add that stuff progressively as they go because you know impossible mode was in previous things we did but now we're unlocking there's a stretch goal five to six players was in previous things that we did but if we get to five hundred thousand, maybe i wonder if that's the route that they're potentially planning on taking, that's a dangerous path. That's a dangerous path, Will Robinson. Because if you don't hit those numbers, your game suffers. Unless you do the thing that a lot of companies do and say, oh, we're just unlocking this because we love you. You know, whatever. Because, uh, All right, so final grade on this one. Let's check out the numbers, actually, by the way, before we get out of here. I always like to see where the most people are checking this one out. So United States. So overwhelming United States of America. Okay. As per normal on board or on Kickstarter. So final grade on this one. Do I want it? Y yeah. Yeah, I do. I would love to have the big box with all the stuff in it. I think that'd be super cool. Can you do it? Yeah. Um, wait, there's no gameplay videos. So here's the thing. I I don't feel like they really did a great job on quotes on this at all. Like they talked about how popular it is, but like I still don't know why I like this deck building game over any other deck building game. So that's that's an interesting one to me. Um, interesting. But can you do it? Yes, absolutely. How much is it? The price, at first glance, just seems not great. $90 is pretty much what you'd pay at the store. And these Cryptozoics are a very popular brand in the store. I see the, their games at a lot of comic book stores. You know, because they have a lot of the licenses. It makes sense. You know, if you got Rick and Morty games, <laughs> you're going to sell them at comic book stores. Um, so the actual game itself, I think, looks awesome. How, and then how much is it? So, but I think the Kickstarter itself, and once again, I want to always comment, I love the DC deck building game. This is not me grading the game or what I think these games are going to be like, or if they're going to be good games or bad games or not. This is migrating the presentation of the Kickstarter. And I don't, I don't feel like they did a fantastic job necessarily. I like the video a lot. 
I like the video a lot. But then once we get into the story, like the seventy dollar one, and, and just can't not help but feeling like, oh, they're making me buy stuff. If I want this, I have to buy this. If I want that, I have to buy the other thing. That's not fun. And especially from a, a really established company in our hobby like cryptozoic and they are they have one of the bigger booths typically they got the licenses they have big announcements about licenses they had ghostbusters they had this they had that and to see this it's just it it feel i will say this i'm not going to give this that negative grade because they're putting they're putting a lot of effort into like spicing it up because sometimes we see companies that don't like and i hate to, i hate to use them as the barometer but you go to like a queen games project and typically, you know exactly what you get. Same with Eagle Griffin games. They have a very formulaic way they do things. It's not about excitement. It's a pre-order. And a lot of people blast them for it and say, you know, why Why don't I just wait until retail? Especially with the more popular companies. So CryptoSoak, I will give them kudos. They're trying different things here. This feels much less like a heartless pre-order cash grab um, than a lot of other stuff. But I just, I feel like... That pledge level area, when you just first hit it, and it's like 70 bucks, and it's like, oh, I have to buy both of them. And it's just these two things. You know, that first glance is just not a good one. And then I get to the shipping, I'm like, so 90 bucks. And then the math, the math that I had in my head, 60 plus 30. That's what I expect to pay for both these games. You know, MSRP, if I go to the comic book store, $60 for one game, $30 for the other game. And I say, wow, that's the exact price I'd pay at the comic book store. So I, I feel like the stretch goal section... Like, what you've unlocked really needs to be in there. That's a full point grade drop, I think, honestly. Because that, both those times, um, does include the new expansion. Yeah, I know. Like, that's what I'm saying, Resi. Like, it includes the new expansion. But when my first initial impression, when I see that $70 pledge level, is it's just the two games. And I don't see that expansion. Like, just putting the picture of that expansion box there immediately is like, oh, okay. Bang. And, like, stretch goals. Kickstarter exclusive stretch goals unlocked. Like, it's just... The presentation there just really I, I just feel like that was a big misstep. So I'm gonna go with a uh I'm gonna go with a C minus on this one. Yeah. The two boxes just seems weird. Like I know it's like art collectors, but it's like not everybody's an art collector. Like I guess they have the pledge level for that, but it's the, and like if Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. I'm gonna go with the C minus. Let me know in the comments below what is your final grade for the DC deck building game tenth anniversary Kickstarter. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button. I'm trying to reach ten thousand subscribers to celebrate my ten year anniversary of making YouTube content. Bye bye.